Hello, this is Steve from SDR Play. In today's video, we're going to look at the squelch function in SDR Uno. First up, we'll look and see what's changed in V1.4 of SDR Uno. Then we'll take a quick look at basic operation of this function. And then, if you want to stay with us, we'll go into more detail on what some of these changes are and how it works. At first glance, nothing much seems to have changed. If we look at the VRX control panel in V1.33 on the left and V1.4 on the right, we can see everything looks basically the same. There's still the squelch button to activate squelch and then a slider to adjust the squelch level. But if you have really sharp eyes, you might see a slight difference on the labeling above the squelch slider. In 1.33, it was labeled in dBs, actually dB full scale, and in 1.4 that's now been changed to dBm and is an accurate measure of the power level at the frequency of interest. Another change can be seen in the main spectrum window. There is now a button in the lower right corner which when selected will activate a display of the threshold level indicated by a yellow horizontal line in the frequency spectrum display. Now let's see how this works in practice. Of course you can continue to set the threshold the conventional way, simply turn on the squelch button and then when the transmission is finished use the squelch threshold slider so that the noise goes away at the end of the transmission. A new option is to set the threshold visually. In the lower right corner of the main spectrum window click on squelch threshold and then a yellow horizontal line will appear. As you move the squelch threshold to the right and left, the horizontal line will move up and down correspondingly, giving you a visual indication of where the square threshold is set. Please note, however, that the threshold may be further above the noise floor shown in the spectrum window than you would expect. The reasons for that will be covered later in this video. As mentioned previously, the threshold for squelch is now calibrated precisely in dBm. And what this allows you to do is set a threshold specifically according to the power level of the noise floor in your signal. To do this, simply tune to a quiet part of the spectrum and then read the noise figure from the display. Once you know what the noise floor is, you could then add a small amount, say 10 dBs above that, set your threshold there, and then you will be able to discern signals which are barely above the noise level. The principle of this is exactly the same as setting the threshold for the scanner function in SDR Uno. So if you've used the scanner function, you're already familiar with this technique. That completes the overview of the squelch function in SDR Uno. We covered the three different ways by which you can set the squelch level, setting it by ear, the old fashioned way, and the two new ways available in V1.4 of setting the threshold visually or setting it by measuring the actual noise floor of the signal. It's also worth noting that there's a built-in 3dB hysteresis in the squelch circuit. What this means is, once a signal is high enough to break the squelch, it has to drop by a further 3dBs before muting occurs again. This prevents the annoying effect of a signal in the vicinity of the threshold causing the squelch circuit to be constantly activated and deactivated. There is a little bit more material we'll cover if you have time. If not, you can stop watching the video right now. But we're going to go under the hood and talk about that strange behavior where the display thresholds seem to be higher than the noise floor that was appearing in the main spectrum window. First up, a quick review of what's going on in your SDR. The output from your RSP is the output from an analog to digital converter that samples the radio spectrum and outputs those as samples there in the time domain. So what you have is a, a continuously varying voltage over time. Once in SDR Uno, a mathematical operation is performed called a Fourier transform. And what that does is it converts from the time domain to the frequency domain, allowing you to display in the main spectrum window different power levels according to the frequency. So what you see in the main spectrum window of SDR Uno 
is representative of the power level at different frequencies. Now it's not a continuous spectrum from one side to the other. The spectrum is actually broken down into a series of bins and the energy level corresponding to each bin is what you're seeing on the display. A couple of terms are used here which uh, you may or may not have noticed on your display. Resolution bandwidth or RBW is the actual width in Hertz of each bin and you can vary that if you go to the bottom of the window and click on the right and left arrows. Now there's no need to do this normally, SDR Uno will take care of that for you. And then the related parameter to that is the FFT points, which are the number of points in the fast Fourier transform. So the number of bins across the screen is the FFT points and the width of each bin is the resolution bandwidth. Now with that in mind, you'll probably realize that the bigger the bin, the more power will appear in each bin. The smaller the bin, the less power is in there. And we can see that in practice if we fire up SDR Uno. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually use the squelch threshold just to create a marker. And I'm going to position that in line with the noise floor as shown in the visual display. Having done that, I'm then going to go ahead and change the resolution bandwidth using the left and right arrows at the bottom of the display. And what you'll notice is, as I change the resolution bandwidth, the apparent noise floor also changes. In other words, this is illustrating what I said earlier. As the bins get smaller, the amount of power in each bin is less. And as the bins get bigger, the amount of power is more. So now we understand about the width of the bins affecting the displayed power level, we can revisit setting the threshold either for the squelch as we showed earlier in this video or indeed for setting the scanner threshold when you're using the scanner function in SDR Uno. You can regard the VFO frequency that you're tuned to as being its own little bin, the width of which is determined by the bandwidth you set in RX control and indicated in the secondary spectrum window in the upper right. So by clicking on a quiet spot of the spectrum the reading given in the main spectrum window in DBM is the power level corresponding to the width that you've set for the VFO. So since the width of the VFO frequency is typically much greater than the width of any of the bins in the spectrum display, that is why when you click on a quiet part of the spectrum, the measured power level is typically higher than the visual power level shown in the spectrum window. That's it for today. I hope you found this information useful. As always, for further information and more applications videos, please visit our website at sdrplay.com. 73.